I love to be wine to dine in a Chicago cafe. The chefs are the best and the menus are so gourmet. The best cuisine on the scene is in Chicago land, USA. Great chefs, great chefs of Chicago. Welcome to Great Chefs of Chicago, a television masterclass with chefs of some of the finest restaurants in the Chicago metropolitan area. This time, the dining room in the Ritz-Carlton Hotel and executive chef Fernand Gutierrez. A native of Dijon, chef Fernand started apprenticeship at age 14, despite parental protest. He later moved to Grenoble to serve under renowned chef Roger Verger. After a Bahamian tour, he migrated to the United States to chef at hotels in Atlanta, Chicago, Atlantic City, Boston, and Houston. In 1983, he became executive chef of the Ritz-Carlton. Situated in Water Tower Place, the hotel offers two restaurants, banquet facilities, and round-the-clock room service, all carefully attended by Chef Fernand and his staff of 100. As one of the stellar restaurants in the city, the dining room is frequented by locals as well as registered guests. After 20 years in hectic hotel kitchens, Chef Fernand's enthusiasm for cooking has not waned. Watch for numerous pointers he shares on this program. Okay, uh, so is the salmon and sea bass tearing, you know, uh, raw? I got a fillet of salmon, I got a fillet of sea bass. The idea is the more or less, it's like a, a version of sushi, but in French, you know? So we are going to, first, I'm sorry, we are going to line up, uh, the terrine is a three-pound terrine with uh, wax paper, you know, in order to be able Okay, so now I'm going to slice some salmon, very thin. The thinner the better. Okay, I have to do a mix which is salt and sugar. I need a small container. Well, it's fine, don't worry, it's okay. Okay, salt and sugar, the same amount, you know, 50-50 uh, more or less. You know, that means uh, whatever, you know, 50-50, okay? We should mix together, you know? And on every layer, you put just a dash of uh, salt and pepper, you know? White wine, but very, very little, you know? And lemon juice. Okay, lemon juice. I put my finger like that, the, the seed, they don't go down to the terrine, you know, to the terrine. Just a little bit. With one lemon, one lemon, you should be able to do one terrine. So... Alternating layers of salmon, sea bass, and curing ingredients fill the terrine. You know, it's a small piece, but nevertheless, it's going to stick together after it's in a cooler for a few days. So now, just fold that down. So you got a little uh, juice is coming out. Just take it out. Take it out. The surplus, no? Then you put, you have to give pressure on it, you know? So you take a, a can. Seafood can, the best. Okay, and you, you just put it like that on, uh, in your cooler for uh, two to three days. Now, four days is even better, but two to three days you should be able to come up with the terrine. The chef begins the accompanying dressing with salad oil and peeled chopped and ginger. Juice. 
Merci. Une de lemon juice. OK. You know. And you leave that marinade in the same time. You leave that like, just like that, you know, in, the, in, your, in your cooler, in your cooler. Or outside, you know, with the oil, it's all right. Outside, two days, if you are going to marinate your terrine for two days, you marinate that for two days. Just prior to service, the dressing is completed. The marinade is quickly blended okay, and flavored with available fresh herbs. Then put your herbs. Okay, it's very up. That's it, just to mix it, you know, because you don't want to have a puree. Your, your dressing is going to be completely white, if not, if you mix it too long, you know. Okay, then our tearing. Okay, you got your paper, put it out. Okay, that's your tearing. It's very fragile, you know, the, so that's why it's very delicate, you know. So that's why I'm using an a electric knife, you know. Okay. Put it in the center of the plate. Okay. Your dressing was been mixed before. Slices of the terrine are served on chilled plates with the ginger herb dressing. Regular quails which you can find in any any market, you know. Most of the time you will find them boneless. Some bone in, but uh, they are available boneless, I'm sure, you know. Okay, salt and pepper. Then pepper. Maybe. Okay, then roast liver mousse. Okay, goose liver mousse again, you know, uh, this one is fresh, but you can find in any can or whatever, yeah. The quails are stuffed with goose liver mousse or pâté. Okay, then you roll them. No laughing, yeah. I can tell you right now, over here, there is the two breasts, you know, the two legs, maybe you, you don't realize, you know, but doing them all uniform is, it's not too important, but. A slice of bacon. Yeah, maybe half slice, those one. The bacon is secured with string. You don't need much, you know. You do one, two, three turns. Tie it up, that's it. Okay, a little bit of uh, clarified butter, you know. Uh, you can put regular butter or... It's better to start maybe with a little oil instead to do a clarified butter in a home, you know. And then... Upside down. You want to give the color on top. So you put them upside down. You see the color? You want to have it, you know? Okay. The mirepoix. Diced carrot, celery, and onion are added. Mm -hmm. 
One bay leaf is plenty. All depends the taste. No, I don't like too much bay leaf. I just like a fresh thyme. Okay. To just brown it up a little bit, those, uh, those uh, the mirepoix I get, it's going to give the color, the color to your sauce too. You know, you got the demi glaze, but it's going to add a, a little color to your sauce. The quails are baked at 375 degrees for about 15 minutes. Large, thin omelets are made with one beaten egg, some water, and salt and pepper. This pan has been painted with oil. It's, it's a crepe, you know. Actually, it's, a, it's an omelette crepe or whatever you want to call it, you know. Make sure the fry pan is not too hot. If it's too hot, you know, you won't be able to run the eggs all over, you know. Despite any resemblance to crepes, these are not turned. Okay, I try to, I want to be sure, you know, they, it doesn't stick. You know, uh, it's a brand new uh, pan, you know, but you never know, you know, you never know. You see, what I want to have is the color, you know. The roast quails are set aside and kept warm while the sauce is prepared. Okay, put them up here. Yeah. So now we are going to start the sauce. Over here we got demi-glace, regular demi-glace. What was the wine, Madeira or port? So, port? Okay, port wine sauce. Uh, port wine, uh, so I want to get the, those vegetables a little more color. Then. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take out the grease. Okay? And I'm going to take out the fat. You don't, you don't want to have the fat in the sauce. Port wine is added. Okay, here's the pot. And I'm going to leave it reduced. You want your wine to cook, you know? So let's say reduce halfway. You see? It's a... Uh, it's almost uh, completely evaporated, you know. Then now I put some demi glace. After demi glace or reduced veal stock is added, the sauce is brought to a boil, then simmered. When the desired consistency is achieved, the sauce is strained. The strings for the pouch are leek leaves, which have been blanched. They are sliced into thin so ribbons. You can do thicker, thinner. Is Those omelets, since they are very thin and all that, you better, you have to be careful, you know. So instead to touch them and all that, I just take the quail, put it in the center, and wrap it, you know. Take a leak, string, put it together, and tidy it up. The sauce, what I want to show you, you know, it's uh, to control the consistency or you put it in a, and the color, you put it on a white plate and uh, you can do something like that. You, know, you put it on a, on a plate, you let it run. If it's what you are looking for, you know, fine. You know, you can put your, your finger just, you know, like I did, just to see how far it goes, you know. If it's liquid enough, thick enough, if it's what you are looking for. In any brown sauce, you don't use a, a, a whisk, you just use just by and like that. If you use a whisk, you know, your sauce is going to, what we say in cooking, get a little white, you know, uh, if you use a whisk. On a white uh, fish sauce, no problem, you know, but on a brown sauce, you just uh, want to use the butter slowly like that. You don't, know, you don't want to rush, it, to rush it. If we use butter, it's just to smooth the sauce, no? Nothing else, it's no, the taste too, you know, it's a, uh, Just spinning 
peel it like a carrot. Chef Fernand peels salsify root. If unavailable, turnips may substitute. Okay, you peel it like a carrot and uh, they turn black, you know, a little bit like celery roots and all that. So you cut it in pieces, you know, and then you put it in milk. Don't put it in water with lemon, don't put it just with milk. You put everything, uh, actually, you know. You cook it in the milk. What you want to have is, uh, after we are going to strain it, just to strain it a little bit and make a puree out of it, like, just like a mashed potato. The puree is dried over heat before heavy cream and butter are added. Little butter. Exactly like a mashed potato, you know. Uh, the, the only thing, when you're peeling, you have to put it in a, in a, in milk. On the side, we have some, uh, some shells, okay. Uh, they are pie dough shells, very thin, you know, regular. You can do any shape you want. You know, uh, and then slice carrot. You are blanch. They are just slice, slice. No, in a blanch. No, they are already cooked. Not to, not overcooked. Just make sure they don't are mushy. And then slice truffle. The idea, what uh, we are going to try to do, it's uh, um, two buckets per person. We are going to put a, a puree of salsify in the bottom. Okay, here we go, you know. You don't look for a design, you just, you are just looking to, to fill up the, um, the shell. You see, they're already... The truffles and carrots are warmed in clarified butter. Start by a small one. It's a combination of color, you know, which I like. That's why we have that today, but... This is a variation of the sauce for the quails. Here, substituting Madeira for port wine. It's nothing else, no? I put some sliced truffle. It's the truffle season right now, so why not, huh? Let's have it. I got some uh, chopped tomato over here, just regular chopped tomato. Little time. The chef carves the fillets from two racks of lamb. He will retain the bones for the sauce. You want to have, uh, you want to end up just with the eye of the, of the, of the lamb, just the eye. You know, I'm going to take out this fat and uh, over here, you know, the the silver skin. You put your knife up, up, and then after the same, up. You want to see to keep a maximum of meat, you know, you don't want to lose that, you know, so you see the knife up. Chef Fernand has started the sauce. With the exception of the browned lamb bones, this sauce is much like the previous ones. Fresh thyme is pressed onto the lamb loins. Any meat you don't put um, you know like what I'm doing now, you know, I put that, but I'm not going to put salt and pepper. If you put salt right now, you know, and I'm going to cook maybe in 10 minutes, the blood is going to come out. You don't want that. You want to keep the blood inside. Like that, your meat will be uh, more tender. So now you can do it uh, rare, medium rare, well done, any, any color you want, you know. Okay, that is sear now, you know, so I'm going to put it in the oven. The lamb is seared, then will go into a 375-degree oven for 15 minutes. 
Here in three pans are the vegetable components of the tiered presentation. They include sliced mushrooms sautéed in olive oil, blanched spinach also sautéed in olive oil, and diced seeded tomato cooked with chopped shallot, garlic, onion, white wine, sugar, and thyme. Little white wine. Salt pepper. Okay, that's a regular cutter, you know, a dough cutter or whatever you want to call it, you know. I'm going to put the spinach in the center and I'm going to line it up, you know, and I'm going to press on it. Oh. Mushroom. Same way. Just a little bit, not too much. The final layer is a thin coat of the tomato mixture. Okay, it's one thing, you know, now, add basil, that's shop basil. I don't cook it, I put it at the last minute. Basil is better fresh than cooked. Not, not even a teaspoon, you know, it's a, tomato is strong, you want to have something, uh, okay. The lamb is thinly sliced and will crown the vegetable disc. You serve, you serve a rack of lamb, you know, for two usually, you know. On that dish, you can use a rack of lamb for maybe two or two and a half. You can do your dish and um, just, the, just the spinach, the tomato, the, the mushroom, and then your lamb at the last minute, and then you, you warm, up, uh, warm up that in the oven. It's uh, no problem, you know. Okay, you want to cover, I want to cover all the plate. In the meantime, I don't want to give too much sauce. No. Then I will take a little, uh, just a little chopped tomato, you know, which I kept on the side. Let me see if I get a, well, maybe with that. Just a little chopped tomato over here. Just for garnish it, you know. A little time. It goes very well with the dish, it's the base of the... And here we go. Regular puff pastry. This quick dessert begins with puff pastry, which may be purchased frozen. Thaw and roll the dough into thin sheets. Very thin. The thinner you can, is the better. Small as the size of the plate, that's why we can use a, to get bigger plate, take a bigger form. Just you don't want that to, to puff up, you know, it's a puff dough. Cored apples are halved and peeled. Very thin too. the tray you start the thinner on the dough and on the 
our boats, the better. That in oven, just like that. The tart is baked for 10 minutes at 400 degrees until slightly brown around the edges. Powdered sugar is sprinkled on top and the pastry is baked another minute. Okay, the sugar. Wow. Okay, here it is. Apple tart. For this menu, Chef Fernand and assistant maitre d' Patrick Tulane recommend Beaujolais Blanc, Chambre Chambertine, Chateau Mouton Rothschild, Chateau Aubryon Blanc, and Chateau Mombasiak. And now, dinner is served. Join us next time for more cooking excitement. This menu compliments Fernand Gutierrez, another great chef of Chicago. Chicago land, yeah, you did Chicago land.